are you serious? Do you not see that I, all these, you, you, you just want me to, to tell you your biceps are big? Like, that's like, I'm And welcome to the Date Your Wife podcast. I'm here with my husband of 20 years who, when I met, I was working at a Sizzler and he was working at a place called The Mayan. The Mayan. And you were uh, you were very good. Sing the song. You had a birthday fa- song like, from Sizzler. Happy, Go. Happy birthday from Sizzler and the crew. We wish it was our birthday so we could party too. Hey! hey! I don't even know if that was a song, but. So you, um, I actually got a text from one of your clients. Oh, from the Sizzler. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, I got a text from him just the a few clients? nights ago. One of my cl- oh, one of our oh, one of your that first so clients, funny. one of my good friends. I had never Tell him the story. I had never served tables before and at Sizzler there's no alcohol. If you don't know what a Sizzler is, you just haven't been to a small town first off. So, I was serving at the uh, Sizzler and I'd never been a server and one of Garrett's buddies came in. His name was Matt Atkinson. He was like a professional server at Chili's because that was the big restaurant there. The big I wasn't town. that high class, so I worked the at the Sizzler. If you were at the Chili's, you were top shelf. Yeah, so I, again, did not, I didn't make the cut because I wasn't 21. So he comes in, he orders hot cocoa. <laughs> it's, the only thing you have to do at Sizzler is serve drinks. You don't even actually have to. That's right, it's a buffet. You, it's a buffet. <laughs> You're, you have one job. You serve the drinks. Yeah. And there's not alcohol. So I brought him his hot cocoa. I brought the mug. And I brought some water somewhere and I brought Did you water. actually put hot water in the mug? I don't even know. I just know I brought him the packet of like Swiss mix or whatever it was and just handed it to him. And he's like, you couldn't even make my hot chocolate? <laughs> and I was like, dude, you know how to do this. But needless to say, I got fired from that job. Well, this is how I felt most of our marriage. Hot cocoa brought to me with this, uh, here's your cup and here's your packet. You'll and figure it own, out. Mix your own thing. Service yourself, you said. No, but you, you, no, I didn't do that. <laughs> you, you worked at the Mayan, though, and I did. you were quite the entertainer. I did. We got a text. I, I got a message from um, Greg, I can't remember his last name, who was our manager at the Mayan just a couple weeks ago on Instagram. And he said, he was talking about how you and I glowed up. We glue up. We, yeah, glow. Glowed, glow it up, glued up, glow. Like you, we glowed you glow, up. You glowed up. Yeah, that we became we became much better looking as adults than we were as young people. That's rude. We just we. It's true. We you know what? No, no. Up. Here's my theory on that. When people say, "Oh, you you glowed up," my theory is I don't a lot think of people, it's glowed up. Okay, it is, but a lot of people let themselves go. So we are we're raising the standard for what you should look at at our age. Mm-hmm. It's not even that we we. I mean, I think we're attractive human beings, but it's like we took care of ourselves. A lot of people, they get married, they gain weight, they chop their hair off, they stop trying as much, right? Yeah. And so it's just like they settle into marriage and that's like the standard. And mm-hmm. I was like, we didn't do that. We like are constantly taking care of our bodies and, mm-hmm. and yeah, so I feel like that's... I had a, I had a guy, some guys I knew that, that uh, were doing some construction, our, my friend named Theo. And Theo stopped me in the parking lot over by the office because he's doing some new construction for some new office space we just got and... He said, hey, me and my cousins were sitting around and we were talking about you last weekend. And I was like, really? About what? And he's like, just how jacked you got. And I was like, well, thank you. And then he said, but the thing you don't understand is this. He's like, we were talking about it because we continue to always tell ourselves a story yeah. and make excuses because all the young guys were jacked. Right. He's all, and then all of a sudden you come along, 47, almost 48, and you do a total body transformation in like nine, 10 months from one body to another body. He's like, now we've given us no excuse whatsoever. We're all younger than you, and our, our you no, know, they're in their early to mid forties, and I'm like knocking on that, knocking on that five zero. You're forty eight. This I know, year. isn't that crazy? It's wild. You I'm know, heading towards fifty. But you know, what is so crazy is is it's like, do you actually want that, right? And that people have. We were talking about this on our walk the other day, and I said to you, I'm like, hey, is your workout harder than what you used to do? And you were like, you did CrossFit and surfing, and you're like, no, and I'm like is your diet harder than what it used to be? And you're like, well, no. And I was like, so how many times do people tell themselves a story? Yeah. And, and even when they start to go down the right path, they like mess, they like fuck it up for themselves. Right. Yeah. I mean, it does take some like 
consistency, but I'm like convinced in life. It's like, choose your pain. Mm -hmm. Like, are you happy? Like for me, like I wouldn't be happy if I was overweight and didn't take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Would I have like, would I be able to eat whatever I want and not have to maintain like the hair extensions and mm -hmm. this, but like, I don't really want that. Yeah. And it's not for me. I'm like, it's not, it, you're always going to have to like choose your path of, of pain. Right. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's more rewarding to eat good and take care of myself because of how I feel and how I operate. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, it makes my life a lot easier not having to think about like food prep or whatever. And I actually really enjoy working out most days. Well, listen, um, this harder, you brought up the comment about the food. You're all, is it harder to eat good than it was to eat not good? I don't think I necessarily ate bad so much as I didn't eat good, which is weird because you're like, there's like eating bad, not eating good, and then eating good. And then there's eating elite, which I'm not eating elite. Right. I'm eating like good Probably could have been without the macadamia nut pancakes. Oh well. my god! Well, we went to the birthday party. I was. I order celebrate. like I'm like, what's the healthiest option on here? I order like a little piece of avocado toast. I look over and you're on here. I'm like, I'm just like, give me two of your macadamia big macadamia nut, nut pancakes, like, like, por favor. Oh and they did. They brought them right out to me. But you're in, you're syrup. trying to bulk right now. You're trying to like. This is the advantage yeah. of being a guy and not a girl training for this stuff. I guess you're like a girl who's not. I mean, you're a girl who's not trying to become a, like a bodybuilder. You're like a bikini competitor. So. It's like different. So you're after a different body than yeah. the girls are trying but to it's, get jacked. I think, the, I think the hardest thing is, is like, it, I, I feel like on the weekends is like my hard time. Yeah. It's like, I want to like, I don't want to eat so clean. I want to go have a treat. I want to go have cocktails or 10. Like, <laughs> like I want to have a good time. And so for me, it's like, I can actually eat really clean during the week and then have fun on the weekends and maintain. Mm -hmm. But most people don't understand if like you're trying to lose, like you just say goodbye to your weekends for a little bit. Like for me, it's like if I'm doing a show, I always joke around. I say I'm sick out because I know if I clean up my weekends mm -hmm. and like not and do like don't cheat at all during the week, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to see results. I think people want to judge their results based off of lack of consistency. And you're like, yep. but are you being honest with your consistency? Or are mm -hmm. you just saying, oh, I've got a thyroid or I've got this or I'm getting older and you telling yourself it's not even excuses. You're telling yourself a line of stories because you're you refuse to, to operate in a space of honesty with yourself. Isn't that the wildest? So I mean, in all honesty with the, the not eating good, then the eating bad, not eating good and eating good, eating great. Like I, it's actually easier for me. I don't know how it is for everybody else, but for me being a routine guy and a pattern guy, it is so much easier to mm -hmm. eat good, borderline great, than it is to, to sit around and have to think about what the hell I'm going to eat every I know, day. exactly. I used to just have breakfast covered and then I'd be stressed yeah. all day. And you know what women do? Women are so funny because they're like, well, I'm going to save my calories so they don't eat all day. And then they come home and they ravage the kitchen. <laughs> and you're like, well, you could have broken that up into smaller mm -hmm. portions throughout the day and had more energy and not actually now your body's like holding on to all this. So it's like interesting that women go into the pattern of, and go, and you tell me like, you're like, I go into the pattern of just like eating random bars all day. You're like, yep. I'm like you just ate like 2000 calories and freaking yep. bars. Bars are the worst. <laughs> that was my pattern before we started getting into to macros and food, food prep. Like it was, uh, it was just, I just eat bars. I, I didn't, I would just, and those are not so great for either, particularly when you're They're eating not. like four of them. Well, they have a lot of sugar and they don't process as clean no. as like just chicken and rice. Like, no. it's just, it's crazy. Well, the chicken and rice game has been amazing for me and it's what I do. Like mm -hmm. literally, so I was sharing with like my brother and my brother was like, we're talking cause he's training for the same competition. And he said, he said, I can't believe like how much bigger you're getting than me. And I said, well, You're a couple things. I said, number one, I'm probably eating more than you. And then we looked at what his calorie consumption was. And Coach Carter has him on 2,000 calories a day. And I'm at 3,500 to 3,800 yeah. a day. So that's number one. And number two, he's having he's using creatine. And I'm oh, using man, yeah. HGH, testosterone, mm -hmm. DECA. I just started DECA. I guess that's all I'm doing right now. I'm going all natural. You are. <laughs> Yeah, you had a little run there for a second for like a month that you didn't really like it. I didn't really like it, but I also had to be realistic with what my goals are. I think that mm -hmm. a lot of times people will lie to their trainers because they say what they think their trainer wants to hear. And I was like, I have to be honest. I want to do a bikini competition. I have no desire to go pro or look pro or even look at half of these girls. I'm doing this for me. I'm doing this to have my own composition of what I want my body to look like, how I feel good. Mm -hmm. And what in turn, I value how I look off stage more than I value how I look on stage. So if I'm realistic with my expectations and I tell my trainer who could totally take me pro and I say, 
I don't want to do that. And also, guess what? I'm going to have a few cocktails on the weekend. So if I'm like honest with what my goals are and not like feel like I'm like feeling guilty, like, okay, I had a couple cocktails and a piece of pizza. I'm like, hey, I, that's, how do you want to correct me? Like, what, where are you going to adjust my food? Mm -hmm. You know, and then having like now that he knows, like she doesn't have a desire to go pro. Mm -hmm. He's like, cool. And he, and it's, and I feel like every show I've done, I've, I've gone into it with this attitude and I place well and I do well yeah. and it's a fun experience for mm -hmm. me and it can be a little bit of a mind fuck, <laughs> it's a complete mind but fuck. it's, but I feel like I keep it in the, in the lane where it's, um, like when I say choose your pain, I keep it in the lane where it's more, uh, positive than it is negative, right? Yeah. Every positive has a negative aspect or side to it, but this one particularly, there's more positive things that come out of it. Yeah. Am I like uh, afterwards? I'm like, Oh, I don't have an APAC and I don't, I'm not so dehydrated. Like there's like a piece in that. That's like really cool to see your body do that. But it's also like understanding, like you're not going to look like that all the time. And the, the more the, like I said, the more positive I got, like having a goal and stepping out of my comfort zone is a win for me. Like just committing to do it is a win for me. And that's what I tell people all the time that are considering doing it. I was talking to Dr. Daniel. He's like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. And I, da, da, da. And I was like, dude, why don't you stop putting such like high expectations that you're going to like w win. win? I was like, you win when you commit. Like that's yeah. what you don't get because the win is in the progress that you see. That was good, man. Yeah. Win is in the commitment. You win when you commit. That's why I be I got I don't really I told you I, I can I'm I train for the photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what are you talking about? I was like, Oh yeah, I don't fucking train for the competition. That's just like the thing in the way of the photo shoot. We do that so I can go get the spray tan. They're like, Why do you why do you do the competition? So I can get the awesome spray tan so I look tan as shit for my photo shoots. I'm like, what are you competing for, photo shoots? Fly Brett Seaman well, from see, Colorado. Well, maybe you're realistic with your expectations. Yeah. You're like, am I going to be 275? I am not. So 275 pounds? No, I was just throwing that number out there because I felt like your number kept climbing. You're like, no, it's 240. 215, 240. It like, has. It has climbed, but it settled in at 240. Okay. Walking around at 240 pounds. Right now, I'm walking around but at But I'm just saying, those guys that like win, what are they walking around at? Um, Real they limited. walk around like 260, 280. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so if you, when you're Depends realistic on the guy, but with yeah, your most goals, you're like, fuck it, I'm doing it for me and I'm doing it because I love the photo shoot and the experience. Experience. That doesn't mean you're not going to like push yourself because it's like I said, the win is in watching what your body can do and the mm -hmm. commitment and the progress along the way. What I'm amazed to do with it is like you get when you get used to when you when you commit to creating your life at a certain speed and a certain pentameter to it and a certain rhythm of constant progress, um, what was new and exciting becomes normal and what becomes normal becomes numb. And what was new and exciting at one point now is nest numb. And you're like, that's normal. That's not like, it's not even, it's not even like exciting anymore. It's like, mm -hmm. it is what it is. It's like the photo, we were doing photo shoot for Valentine's Day. Yeah. And he sent me the picture and I was like, I was like, oh man, my arm just looks so <laughs> like small. It's like the cutest photo ever. So and that's small. the, and I'm all excited and to send it to you and you're all, my like arm all looks small. small. I was like. You're all, I was <laughs> actually, and then you texted back, you're like, I was thinking the opposite. I thought you looked huge in that picture. Yeah. And I was like, the body dysmorphia is real. <laughs> it's really kicking in right now. But like this whole process of like growth though, mm -hmm. that is yeah, how life is. Right. You people look at you and go, you're fucking huge. And you in your mind are thinking, ah, not really, you're because there's the this gap. other thing I'm wanting to go you're to, which is 240. Gap. Yeah, of course. You've got to live in the game. But this, okay, so the, we, we've now got our topic for the show 12 <laughs> minutes in. Congratulations, <laughs> Mrs. White. So you've got this idea of gap and gain. Um, talk about this for a second. Also, a great book by Dan Sullivan. Fantastic book. It's one of Almost the... Almost it. Danielle, I, I, I'm very proud of you for listening to it. Not because I, I'm not, you know, don't think you're a capable human being. I just, you don't tend to download books like this and listen to them too I, often you're anymore. You're so funny. I, I, I I'm not do. saying you never do. I'm just saying you rarely it's do. rare that I finish them. I start lots of audiobooks, actually. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, so tell them about The Gap and Game by Dan Sullivan. Um, Dan Sullivan was one of my mentors for I 10 years. People, strategic like, coach. Successful people, sometimes you get so lost in the the gap which they're saying like the gap is like you don't appreciate what you've built because you're always chasing like the next big thing and ultimately like you have all this success and like you're still miserable and so it's like but then what's the point to, ch to chase the next thing because are you always just going to be chasing and never actually realizing what you've built and the impact that you've made is pretty cool so and I think as humans to say that we're like especially driven humans w there's an element where, where we need to live in the gap 
But if we can't appreciate the gain, then we get lost in the gap. So you better walk them through the gap and gain a little bit so people understand what you're talking about. So, here. well, like I said, so like the gain is like if you just are really appreciating where you're at right now. Compared to? It compared to like you're always stressed about. No, but when you're, you you're, you're in the gain because you're, you're comparing who you are now to what? You're what? <laughs> yeah, like in, in the gain, in order to be in the gain, I have to compare where I'm at today with what? Right. What am I comparing it with? You just have to have, it's almost like a, compare it to how much you've done, how far okay. you've come. Okay, so compare it to who? What version of us? I'm not quizzing you right now. Oh, I'm just trying to like... help the listeners understand because you've explained it roughly, but not really. You, you're saying gap and game, but there's not really a, a frame I or a container like as a like listener a, to understand. You better describe it better than, because I don't know what you want me to go with. Well, there's like where I'm at right now, right? So where I'm at right now, I'm like, oh man, I look tiny in the Valentine shoot. Oh mm -hmm. fuck, I'm not 240 pounds strong with me. Da -da -da. If we take now, mm -hmm. Garrett J. White now, and we go back to Garrett J. White, January 2023, yeah. one year ago. You'd be like, whoa, who's that guy? I'm 20 pounds heavier right now than I was a year ago. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, like I have a back, I have glutes. You even said I look like an athlete from behind, which is exciting because I've been an athlete my whole life, but now I finally look like one. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the game, which is looking at where I am and looking back at the growth I've had mm -hmm. and saying, wow. Yeah, giving yourself some credit. Yeah, well, take our marriage, take our marriage. Like, what's different about our relationship now versus 12 months ago? Um, open dialogue and communication. At what level? Um, just kind of like understanding each other's needs and like taking it to more of like a soul connected level. Have we ever had it this way? I think we've had moments of it, I would say, but it's like almost recognizing that this is a space and a vibration that I like won't tolerate anything else you know what I mean mm -hmm. in fact it's gotten for me it's like I can tell when we're off that because things have been so good mm -hmm. I'm like less tolerant I'm like mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not gonna even go back there right mm -hmm. so it, it makes even conversations or arguments be like irrelevant you're like why like where it used to trigger me more you know mm -hmm. because we've had better uh, dialogue and conversations so like things that I would normally get triggered out I'm like let's just work through this yeah like, what are we both trying to say to one another right now was that how things were January last year? No, it was, it was explosive freaking fights like every other night. It was intense, <laughs> right? But I think we were both feeling unseen and unheard and looking to go to the next level and mm -hmm. got to the space where we thought we had the, the checklist, like we had mm -hmm. done it all, right? But we weren't living in like the gain. Well, there was, we were, we were living in the gap for sure because we weren't appreciating what we had actually done because up to that point last year, we'd done a lot too. I mean... If you look at the progress in our relationship, like we did, we wouldn't go on trips the way we go on trips. I wasn't buying you gifts the way I buy you gifts. I wasn't like going out of my way to do things like I now do that I wasn't doing. Like I wasn't even conscious. If I go back like yeah. even five years ago, know. I was still, yeah. go back to even the first times you're buying handbags and I like, it was having like convulsions and like, like having seizures out in the hallway over the fact that we were buying this oh my handbag. Gosh. I remember there was this, there was like a period where, yeah, I was like, he's like gonna throw up because I <laughs> just bought a Chanel bag like that's like he just spent like 20 grand on like software shit for his office but like something that makes me happy he can't he I remember but you've come a long way there's moments where I I can you'll be like nope let it go but <laughs> hey listen so again this is a perfect principle which is like the gain is saying where am I at now although that's never going to be where I ideally aspire to be because where you ideally aspire to be is always moving and then there's looking back. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look back and you're shittier now than you were before, and your marriage is the opposite, which is like your marriage is now in a shit show, That's and last year it was news. awesome, okay, well now you know that the gain is, you can clearly see that there's some work to be done. Yeah. Right, but this ability to look back is where gratitude and appreciation and respect and honor is where it comes into play. And if I look at our marriage and what we've done the last 12 months, like it's incredible. I would say we've done more work emotionally and mentally, I mean, you've cried more in the last year with me than you've cried in the previous 22 years. That's not true. That's 100% true. I'm super sensitive and I cry a lot. You're like a hundred times more crying. Like if, if we you added up what, all though, the times it, of crying we, with we, me okay, in so 22 we, years, you know what like it is? five. I, you know what I realized? And it was, I realized that one of the girl, the cute girl was sharing in our couples event last week. Shani. It was like, I didn't, it wasn't that I, you thought I was unemotionally available. And what I realized is I didn't want to burden you with my emotions like for women and I know I've like a lot of women 
the more and more I talk to them, they are like, they want to be the support for the guy. They want to be here. They want to be strong. But in doing that, they're not emotionally opening up to their men. Mm -hmm. And the men actually need that piece too. They prefer that versus like walling up or feeling resentful because you think you're trying to be like, you don't want to burden the guy. That's all I can explain. Is that what you really felt? You felt like you were yeah, going to burden I've me? Always, I've always felt that way. Like I think in my by nature it was like, Okay, you're the strong one. Like I would always tell myself, like you're the mom, you've got the kids, you've got your business, like you hold it, you hold your shit together, you know. Mm. And in in I think that's why like a lot of times I take on so much. It's mm. like almost like a, it's not a distraction, but it's like you're the strong one. You you can do it all. Give leave leave someone do no excuses. Like you know you know what I mean. Yeah. Like and I'm like that's not really a very good place to be you know I'm like I want to be emotionally available for you and for my children and I can't there's this balancing of act of like I need to be strong for the family but I also need to be um very good at communication and and talking about what I want because if like I don't take care of me then it's it's not good for anybody well you were at the point of blow up last year Coming into March. Well, it's because, because I wasn't you communicating. Yeah, it was, was because on. I was not communicating. It was just like, I mean, I had my fourth kid. I had like just, there was so many moving pieces mm -hmm. in my world. And it, in my mind, what I kept saying is like, this will pass, this will pass, this will pass. And so I think I just, you were kind of stressed out with work. And I was like, why well, don't it, this, this is fine. Everything, this is fine. This is fine. Like my team members <laughs> always make fun of me because when I'm stressed, I'm always like, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. And they're like, your eyes are twitching weird. And I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but it's because I'm like, I get to this place where it's like, I don't know if I'm scared to open up. I don't know if I feel exposed. And I, it probably is. It probably, I probably just feel like a fraud and like I'm exposed, you know, because I've always just like had this, like, you got to be perfect. You got to be strong. You got to hold the ship together. <laughs> what was it? What was the tipping point for you to tell the truth? Um, when I, I, I think with anything, it's like when you, you're in such a painful spot, you're like, I got nowhere else to fucking go. Like I'm having like really bad like thoughts and like you can't get any, like when you feel like you can't get any lower and I'm not talking just about having money or whatever, but when you hit this tipping point, you're like, I'm over this shit. I'm not going to tolerate this shit in myself anymore. Mm -hmm. And so then you, you, you choose to dig yourself out of that ditch, whatever it is. What was the thing that you stopped tolerating in yourself? Um, I think it was just like telling myself, like, because you have all these things, you should be happy and don't burden anybody else with any of your feelings or emotional needs. Like, suck them up. Suck those tears back up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, no, I, I need to feel heard and seen and emotionally connected. And so I think because I was trying to be the support for you, mm -hmm. I wasn't feeling seen and heard. Got it. So then it just like I was like, well, this is not going to work. Is that why you're getting so triggered about me asking for more words of validation at the time? Because you already so, felt yeah. like you, cause you think, were so emotionally locked in. And I and like I said, like I think I was seen. so at that time when you something as simple as like, "Hey, babe, I'd love it if you," because I felt like I was being so supportive for you. Like I literally was like, "Are you kidding me?" I was like, "I just had your fourth baby. I also run companies. I literally make you dinner every fucking night." I'm like. I like my I went on to do when I got my body back in shape like I take care of myself mm. I'll come support you at events like I, I'll tr you want to go travel out to Florida and go to this I'll go I was like are you I'm like are you serious like so I felt very unseen in that mm -hmm. moment when I felt like I was showing up as like your best support cheerleader slash plus had a hot body plus had four of your kids and I was like are you serious do you not see that I all these you 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 just want me to, to tell you your biceps are big like it's like mm -hmm. are you fucking kidding me like I was like I can't like because and like I said I think it was more of like I um I was all of a sudden just not feeling seen at all I was like he doesn't see any of this other shit he doesn't know how I'm showing up that's mm -hmm. really sad for me what was interesting is like to get to a point in therapy where in the last year we've realized that a lot of what you were feeling, I was feeling, a lot of what I was feeling, you were feeling, that we were both hurting, we were both feeling the pressure inside, mm -hmm. and we both were having this story of like, hold on, we've hit all of the checklist, yeah, yeah. and yet there's still this piece in both of us that is a bit hollow and yeah. not connected. And so the last year, there's been like an incredible amount of work. One of the things we've done that, to be able to make that happen is, is we've done therapy. Mm -hmm. And we come off of therapy <laughs> typically right before this podcast. I don't know how many sessions we've done. Well, we did such, we started doing active sessions. It definitely, it definitely as busy as we are. It's definitely been 
a game changer. It's definitely something that we need. And even in our last call we had, I was saying, I'm like, because we introduced this thing called the Date Your Wife Experience, where like all couples can come and we lead kind of a group discussion. Last week we had our therapists actually come and be a part of it, had some really cool experiences with other couples. Um, but I, I, a lot of people um, or couples, I find they're scared of therapy. They're like, I'm broken. I don't want to do this. Everything's fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And they just have this running narrative that if I go to therapy, it means I'm broken. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so why don't we not call it therapy? Why don't we just call it a working hour on your marriage? I'm like, because Garrett and I had been doing date nights on a weekly, every week, sometimes twice a week, and yet still found that we weren't feeling seen and heard and had effective conversations. We had fun. We had drinks. We had great sex, like whatever. But there's, there's a part in marriage where it's like you work with your teams right you have team meetings every mm -hmm. single work week to discuss tough conversations and solve problems but yet it's a it's a side conversation with kids screaming in the background as couples right and then you wonder why like you're so triggered by everything your husband's doing because you don't have this effective time so I've been like recommending it to all couples I'm like you want to you want a marriage that's on fire you want to have connect you want to have that connection and feel seen and heard then you have to have a working hour on your marriage and that's what mm -hmm. we've done is i'm like don't don't call it therapy if that triggers you and you think you're broken or damaged or whatever just say i'm going to schedule a working time with my partner yeah. and you must do it with a therapist otherwise you can't have tough conversations without the fucking ego getting in the way and somebody getting triggered and so it's it's important to have somebody else like listening in and then like pause the conversation yep. and then reframe the words so that your partner can actually effectively hear what you're trying to communicate. And Garrett and I, our personalities are so different. I'm like, you're speaking Spanish, I'm speaking English, and they are not, it is not going, it's not right. working. So for us, it's been great. And I have been a lot, especially like I said, busy couples especially ones entrepreneurs that have mm -hmm. kids i'm like this should this is you need to you don't have a choice you don't you don't have a choice you want to not get divorced and and for the fourth time maybe yeah. <laughs> like seriously like this is something that you should probably look into is having a working hour in your marriage does it is therapy something you look forward to now um i don't it's not like i'm like i'm so excited to have because sometimes there are some crappy conversations you know mm -hmm. it's i wouldn't say i'm excited it's it's work it's like a team meeting are you excited to go to your yeah. team meetings no but you know at the end of the day you're gonna get shit done yeah <laughs> and you know your teams are gonna progress forward based on the work that you did so isn't it it's funny kind of how like, like eh. isn't it funny how as an entrepreneur though you could look at your company your, your and you business? would never imagine yes. not having a, a a a hard conversation sit down with your CFO with your COO with your teams your managers your sales teams and like having data conversations and you would you would never you would never run a company like this you would go bankrupt if you did right and yet we run our marriages with no metrics right. there's no KPIs there's no right. measurements for success we typically don't have a unified vision and where we're moving towards there's not some big thing that we've individually and collectively grown towards what if and on top of this, we don't have regular weekly meetings. It's all text and via volleyball and between office and work and girl texting the office. Like it's just, it's, there's nothing organized about it. And then we wonder, <clears throat> we don't take parenting courses. We don't take sex courses. We don't take communication courses. We go to church and we think somehow the <laughs> church is going to teach us how to have better sex, how to have better communication how to be better parents, how to be more fit, how to be more, and you're like, bro, that's too much for the church. Like there's you and pursuing it as a couple, which requires a commitment. And you've made that commitment. What's made it easier for you to make that commitment? Because you're not just like kind of committed, like you, you, at least my experience of you is you're all in committed, not like halfway. It's not like I'm having to put a gun to your head I, and say, let's go to therapy. Let's go on date nights. Yeah. Let's work on our marriage. Let's work on ourselves. And I mean, I even asked you about going to date with Destiny, and I mean, you were like, like, let's go to Joe Dispenza. Like, here's the thing, like, you, it's like, I would never tolerate a failing business. Why would I tolerate a failing marriage? And I think there's a really low standard for what marriage looks like. And so people are unwilling to put the work into their marriage that they would into their businesses because they don't look at the return on investment. And yeah. I'm like, you have no idea that if you actually... I'm not saying you got to go full time into your marriage, but like little things like w like we're doing date nights, therapy, things like that. If you can invest just little things that will actually 
save your marriage. And it's it's a story that couples tell themselves that they don't have time. And I'm like, this is going to cost you more in the long run. So I, I don't know. I, I think it's like I'm all in because I'm like, I've I already told you, I'm like, you're my person. And I expect to have a great marriage. I don't want a B plus marriage. I don't want a C minus marriage. Mm-hmm. I want I want to be happy and fulfilled and keep pushing and growing just like I would in my companies. I want to do the same thing with my family and my kids, my marriage, because like I said, success is not defined by your bank account. And if we got paid on how well our marriage was, that would really change the game for entrepreneurs. <laughs> there you have it. So, Hey, listen, we've got to wrap up today's show. We've got, uh, this amazing program that happens every single week. It's a weekly call. It goes for about 90 minutes. It's called the date your wife experience, and you can get it for free by going to wakeupwarrior.com and gaining access to our Warrior Launch program. You can also go to warriorlaunch.com where you'll be able to gain access to that call for free every single week for four weeks. You'll also get access to our Warrior Launch call as well as all of the Wake Up Warrior tools found inside of the Warrior app. All of that available on a trial for you for 30 days. And so if you're getting value from this show and you like the conversation dialogue and you'd like to continue that conversation with your spouse in a deeper, more powerful way with a bunch of couples like ourselves, well, you know what to do, head to warriorlaunch.com. And uh, if you'd like to see some amazing photography <laughs> of my wife really smashing it this Valentine's season, well, head to our Instagram account, uh, Danielle K. White. I actually yeah. just launched my new blog today. Oh, you did? It's called Danielle K. White. Okay. It talks about all my brands, hair brands, kids brands, fashion, fitness, family. So, you know. That's out Fashion, today, fitness, family, and finance. Yeah. How about you just use body, being, bounce, and business? Hey, one day you'll don't be a sellout. So one day you'll you're now starting to be realize. like those that copy me. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> My right, own guys. wife. All right, we're out of here. Have a great rest of your week. We'll look forward to seeing you guys next week.